hot rods. Uh, today we got this uh, red 2000 Camaro SS. Uh, guy drove uh, from Harlingen down in Far Texas for us to get the work done. Um, we're pretty much going to do the same thing as the uh, this car from the previous video. Remember, there's a part two on this one coming soon. Um, we're going to take it to the dyno, get a baseline, and then we're going to do some PRC heads. I'm going to do a fast intake. Uh, do an MS3 cam this time. New gasket, stuff like that. Trunian kit. Uh, the difference on this one is we are going to pull the motor on this car. Uh, we're going to do oil pump, rear main seal, gaskets, cleaning, timing chain, all that other stuff that we should have done to this car. Um, but we thought it wasn't going to need all that since it was a low mileage. But working on this car, we figured um at some point in its life the engine had been taken out and only reason was because of all the stuff we found as we were working on it so uh this one we're gonna go to josh in a little bit it's kind of cold outside it's it's pretty bad that's why i have the door closed um so we're gonna cruise it over there josh will open up for us and we'll do a, a baseline see what it makes before is this technically uh 6.0 a motor with just stock everything stock intake stock injectors it has headers it's been tuned by someone already so we'll see what a stock 60 setup does and then we're gonna do the work and then we'll see what it does after with the prcs so let's head out to josh here in a little bit sound stock so uh, we'll do a comparison before and after it's got a little squeak some pulley probably the idler, idler pulley or the belt it's cold outside right now uh, a stock sound let's see how much power it makes the way it is All right, so we're back from uh, the dyno and we're uh, way ahead of ourselves here. I forgot to record um, this disassembly, but we got the intake off. All the front accessories, we're getting the headers off right now. Um, so obviously somebody had already worked on this car, so we're running into the whole bolts aren't the same as what I expected. Different bolt sizes, different ways they bolt this stuff up so just going around those little uh, obstacles so we'll have the motor out here in the next 30 minutes so all we got to do is loosen up the transmission bolts torque converter bolts and motor mounts and uh engine won't come out and we'll start the rebuilding process of the uh, heads cam we'll do the intake we're gonna pressure wash the engine bay keep everything real clean wash everything get all the grease off so and the paint is blocking and everything so we can go back to um having a nice fresh setup so these are all the old parts that are coming off. And I'm gonna keep on going until this is out tonight. All right, so we got the bumper off. So our engine hoist doesn't touch the bumper. We're not a uh, big fans of damaging bumpers, whether they're painted nicely or not. So we're getting the engine out. The top, like everybody, for 10 years said that it couldn't be done, but everybody knows now they can be. All right, go back, go back. There we go, turn it that way. All right, we're gonna get ready to put it on engine stand, but there it is, out. It's got a nice converter in it, so. Main reason for pulling it is one, ease of access to the cylinder heads to work on the, the PRCs, also to clean and replace all this gasket and all this mess. So, I'm 
give it back to him looking like a new motor with uh, all clean parts and clean engine bay and scrub all this stuff. I guess there was a a cat or a, a rat in here or something because uh, we took the bumper off. It's all wet and it smells really bad. So we're going to wash all that. Um, yep. So we're going to get the engine on a stand and we are going to start disassembling it and also washing the car. We'll probably do that tomorrow morning. Right now, we're pretty much done for the day. So we'll jump back with you guys tomorrow morning or the next day in your case. All right, so the motor's out and uh, we're taking off the rocker arms and the heads. So one, to determine uh, whether it's an LQ4 and LQ9, but also to clean the remainder of the block. We already pressure washed it. Uh, to knock off a lot of the grease that was already there. So the bottom of the block is clean. So is the oil pan uh, Since we're not gonna use these heads. We didn't really focus on pressure washing the heads while it was on So we're gonna remove the heads uh, And uh, start prepping the block for the new cam the new oil pump the new trunion kit the new Springs the new heads the new intake all that stuff. So We already took care of uh, pressure washing the engine bay as you can see, the racket pinion is visible. <laughs> That's kind of a, a way of saying it's clean. So we took care of that. So we're just gonna continue disassembling and we'll go from there. All right, so the heads are off and it's an LQ9. So it's got flat pistons. Um, the motor has been rebuilt. There's a stamp from machine shop and the heads have stamps too. So we're not using those heads, so right now he loosened up the oil pan for me. So let's take off the oil pan. Good. Uh, just probably dirty oil. Good clean pickup tube-ish. Got a little bit of, oh no, it's clean. Uh-oh. Uh, there's no uh, oil pump bolt for the pickup tube. So I'm hoping it's not in the motor somewhere. We'll check the oil pan, but that or they forgot it. So good thing we pulled the motor out. How's it go attempt to try to do an oil pump on the car? We're going to have to do the oil pump. It's going to have to find a bolt, but... There's no oil pump bolt. It had good oil pressure, so got lucked out there. But I think from now on, anytime an F body comes to the shop, uh, whether it's a uh, heads and cam motor is coming out because things like this, where it's not my fault, will some for some reason people will say, "Hey, you did the the cam on it, and the motor messed up." And well, I didn't do that chances of people bringing work that's been worked on other at other shops and this is the kind of stuff that they bring so this car luckily i had already spoken to the customer i said this motor's coming out anyways so it's a good thing we did this because this is where we start finding things that need to get taken care of before we start throwing some good horsepower numbers at it so let's keep digging all right so i'm in the process of just cleaning services and making sure that uh, everything mates pretty clean before I put new gaskets on and the new cam in. So I'm still working on it. I gotta take off all this old rock hard gasket material that stayed from the, um, the old gasket. So I'm, right now I'm working on cleaning the pistons and the cylinder head surface. Okay, we got a good view. These are what the pistons looked like before. It's pretty nasty, pretty oily, pretty dirty. That's the old head surface, the way the heads came off. So I'm cleaning all that, making sure that they stay good for a fresh start. Then we're gonna clean. All right, so we got the new lifter trays, new lifters, cleaned up the uh, pistons, got the new cam in there, the new timing chain. Uh, about to install the new oil pump. 
the valley cover, the valley cover gaskets, the new knock sensors, the new knock sensor harness, the oil pan, and the heads. So, putting the heads, we got good head gaskets. And we got um, the PRCs already completely assembled with the springs on there. These come bare, they don't come with springs, so we have to put the springs on there. And uh, there's the other head, we're about ready to set it down, so it's a little, uh, a little process that I like to do. I don't like to put stuff back dirty, so um, I like to take my time and clean it up real nice. So as you can see, that's all the junk that I've been taking off the pistons and the body of the of the block. So the block is clean. It's going in good. I'll show you the other side. Got all the dirt and mud and rust scraped off. Let everything fall into the pan. So we're going to throw the heads on it, torque everything down, seal it up, close it up, and get it ready for install for tomorrow. Looking good. Much nicer. There you go. So these heads are 241s that we sent out, or he sent out, um, to get worked on. So uh, Texas Speed says that any uh, head that you send, um, they pretty much make it their stage 2.5 or whatever it is, or stage 2 cylinder head. Let's see what it says here. Yeah. It's... Uh, Two five three two point five, whatever. So it's a 241 head that we sent out. He said it could be 317s. It could be 799s. It could be 243s. It could be 241s. It could be 806s or something like that. That they all make them where there are big valves, 202, 160, or 212, 160 valves. Do all the work. So it says PRC on there, front and back. Cleaned up real nice. Beautiful work that they do. So I'm gonna keep working on this engine, finish it up already. Okay, so the motor is officially, well, I'm lying. The motor is sealed up, not completely, but the bottom half of the motor and the front rear covers and the oil pan are sealed, sealed up completely. So uh, I'm going to flip the motor over. I was going to seal it up, but I forgot that we got Trunian kit for this. And um, I was about to put the valve covers on it and get this ready to put in tomorrow. But I got to uh, disassemble the Trunians and... Uh, for the rocker arms, so I just want to show you the underside block is all clean Pin it up dry it's nice Heads looking real good so I'm gonna flip this over and uh, Take off the rocker arms. I was about to Finish it off <laughs> like that so I got a a little process probably about an hour or so for me to swap out the trunians on every single rocker arm but um yeah here's progress on the engine looks pretty good i like it a lot it's gonna look real nice in the car okay so uh the chg says to use a press or a vice and i have a press so we're gonna do yeah they tell you to use a 7 8 socket 12 point it has to be a 12 point and a 9 16 also 12 point. I'm gonna use the backside. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to press the trunions out and make them look like this. Just bare. So we can clean these up and then um, put the new stuff in there. So I'll show you the process. Let's see here. So it says to place the bottom of the trunion center. Center the trunion, and you come down. Let's 
That's it. Loosen it up. Socket come out. Training goes out, and all the little needle bearings come out too. So we're not reusing this, so we're throwing this in the trash. I'm just gonna make sure, and that's how it's supposed to be. I'm gonna do this a couple more times, get all the uh, old trunnions out, and clean these up real good. Probably let them soak in some degreaser overnight, so they look brand new. And uh, we'll go and show you the installation process of the of the, the nutrients okay so we got all the um rocker arms uh degreased and cleaned up this right now just has wd-40 so they don't rust but they're cleaned up so what you're gonna do is you grab a uh i guess a bushing and it says to use any assembly lube, uh, oil, you got, I got these two. This one's super white lithium and this one's assembly lube. This one's a little bit more messier. It stays on a lot longer. So I'm going to use the assembly lubes so I don't get a uh, too much, um, what do you call it? Like too much, uh, just mess out of in the way. Put some on the inside, running a little low. Some on the inside, some on the outside. It's just a little, it's just oil. You're gonna get a rocker arm and place it on the outside. So there's two sides, there's a flat side and then there's a side that goes in. So you just place it over like that, All right? Just put it down. You're gonna get a trunion. Put oil on both sides of the trunion or assembly lube. Oil, I think engine oil works too. I think the instructions say engine oil is fine. Sorry. Need to get some more right now. Just, just for a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Just uh, instructional purposes, just so we can uh, show you how it's done. Got some there, some there. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna slide it in. There you go. I'm careful because it'll push it out. See? So, what I did first is I grabbed the uh, snap ring pliers and a lock. And I put it on so it's not so hard and moving around. Let's see if I can do that real quick. So pretty much you put your snap ring plier here. And you put, once you do that, you turn it to the other side. And then you put another bushing with oil in. And you put a snap ring plier there. And then your trunnion is done. So it would look like like this. No, not, not this one. This is the one I use with assembly lube. But it pretty much looked like this. Snap ring plier, trunnion. Doesn't move. Spins perfectly fine. So that's how it is. Let me just finish them all up and uh, throw them on the engine. Okay, so the trunnions are on and uh, rocker arms are torqued down to factory specs. Yeah, there it is, all locked up and everything. Everything is clean, nice. Gonna get some oil in there. Once it turns on, we'll probably prime it. What I do is I take off the fuel pump relay and I take off the coils so no spark or fuel goes in. I crank it and uh, watch the gauge, it works all the time. I don't know, people have different methods, but I do it like that. Uh, I can do it on the engine stand, but it's the same thing. So I just put it on the car, crank it about five seconds at a time. And after like the third or fourth time, it gets oil pressure real quick. So 
uh, I'm going to throw the covers on it and test fit the intake before I put it. Because the last time I put uh, an intake on the other Trans Am video, I had a little back and forth maneuvering to make sure that that thing sat correctly. So I'll assemble the intake, test fit everything before I throw it in the car. And it'll probably be ready by Tuesday, hopefully. Still got to swap the fuel pump. Uh, swap the fuel pump. Got Still got to take the exhaust to get welded. And got to throw oil in it, antifreeze. So Tuesday, Wednesday, should be up and running. And uh, we'll see what kind of power it puts down. Again, uh, the dyno, it's not 100% certain because the car only made 290 or 289 or 298 horsepower but in second gear so we're having what josh said that he's having problems with uh vibrations on the dyno he's he doesn't like pushing cars that have vibrations so like this car on the dyno it had a little vibration and it was kind of odd so he doesn't like to push them he doesn't like to break things so he told us that it's not necessary for him to do a full third looking pretty good i like it it's looking really nice and clean. Very, very nice. It's just test fitting the intake, making sure that when I'm bolting it down, it's not interfering with anything on the bottom of the valley or anything in the back. So, so far it's sat flat up against the head. And it looks really nice. So I just gotta assemble the intake. It's gonna take me a little bit to make sure everything's nice and tight. And then we should be ready to throw it in. But what's that right there? A thumbnail? Use that as a thumbnail, maybe? Okay, who knows? We'll figure it out. skip forward and threw everything on it you guys kind of got the basics how it's done if you haven't uh just go back through a couple of uh, the last video i did with the trans am um everything's the same f bodies uh the fast intake was the same process as the trans am that i did um right now just going over it one more time just finished installing the mighty mouse catch can uh the intakes on the 90 pound injectors are on the 104 uh ftp lid is on with the coupler um other than that we're pretty much ready to go to the dyno that's what we're gonna do right now we're gonna load up the car uh get it turned on because it doesn't turn on with uh with the 90 pound injectors and then we're going to um let it idle run for a bit then give it a couple runs see what kind of difference we make uh as far as power so let's head out
All right, so we're back at the shop, and uh, we learned some things. Uh, driving it back, we learned a few things about the car that we're going to have to take care of before we completely turn it into the customer. One is it has a really, really bad exhaust leak. Um, two, we noticed that it smells a lot like fuel, and we're getting a lot of uh, mixed um readings on the o2s so we're thinking the fuel pump is deadheading so originally it has a fuel dampener or regulator in the fuel pump and it has one up on the fuel rail but since uh, i put an aftermarket pump and uh, i got ls2 rails that don't have a return or don't have a dampener uh, i'm thinking the uh the fuel pump's deadheading and it's causing a, a issues with the injectors because uh during tuning we were scaling the injectors and we're trying to uh i guess reduce the 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 percentage and we were down to practically four or five percent duty cycle and it would still run rich so 434 horsepower at 6,000 rpm it's pretty good uh we want to lean it out a little bit because it was running rich see if we can go into the 450s but uh it's it's pretty good we know the car's capable of it so what i'm going to do now is other than the exhaust leak that it's got real bad from the headers, the customer ordered uh, brand new uh, headers with a white pipe. And he ordered a fuel pressure regulator, an aeromotive one, so I can install that. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and swap out plugs because we notice it's falling out plugs too. That's how I know it's running fat. So other than that, the car's been pretty good. It drove pretty good. Just kind of stumbled a little. If you hold it, it starts to, it starts to rough idle. It starts to load up. So... Towards the end of this week, we're going to finish that up for him, clean up the car, and then he can enjoy it. And hopefully soon, within a couple weeks or so, we'll get some footage of this car at the racetrack. Um, thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, please comment down what you think. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So we'll see you guys on the next one.